You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I feel like experimenting today with my cannoli tubes. I haven't used these before, but rather than making the crisp cannoli shells that get stuffed with a cream filling, what if I were to work with puff pastry sheets and wrap the tubes in these and then bake them and fill them with a cream filling? Sounds like it might be fun to do. So let's see what happens today. I think I'm going to need an egg wash as a glue to hold my cannoli shells together. A double yoker. Check that out. Haven't seen one of those in years. Okay, I think the easiest way to do this with the twins. If you want to hear an interesting part of the story, I'm a twin. Yep. Look at that. I bought a dozen eggs one time. And they were 11 double yokers in it, and there was one triple yoker. I couldn't believe it. The entire package was twins, and there was one set of triplets. Okay, I pulled out some plastic wrap. I'm just going to cover these and pop them in the refrigerator because I'm going to be making a custard cream later on. And then I'll use egg yolks. I just want to break this up as much as possible. I'm using just the egg whites because I'm thinking that'll give me the most glue for my money. One thing about these puff pastry sheets is thaw them and then use them quickly. They thaw in 30 to 40 minutes. Don't leave them in the refrigerator for two or three days because they'll turn into a gummy mass that it'll be impossible to work with. I wrapped one of the folded up sheets in parchment paper so it wouldn't dry out while it was thawing. And now I want to try to unfold this. And that's working. Nice. Still a little bit frozen on the inside. I think it's best to work with it a little bit early than too late. All right, my puff pastry sheets are large enough that I should be able to get four pieces out of each of these sheets. So a box would give me eight of these pastry shells. I'm gonna cut this in half this way. One of the things I'm going to experiment with is I'm going to wrap my tubes in parchment paper. I'm thinking this will make them easier to remove after the pastry is baked. Like so. I'm going to roll this up and then using my pastry brush and my egg white. I want to brush that with egg white so that this will then stick. Press that together and I'm hoping that won't come apart when it bakes. I am in the meantime heating my oven up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 200 degrees Celsius. So there go my pastry rolls, my pastry tubes into the oven. I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes and then I'll check them to see what they look like. If I have to go a little bit longer, I can. I just took my pastry rolls out of the oven. They look fantastic. I baked them for a total of 20 minutes to get them as brown as I wanted them. Now I have to let them cool so that I can remove those metal tubes. I want to pull the tubes out of a couple of these pastries so I can see what they look like. The tube comes out easily. 
Ah, so does the paper. So there's a nice pastry tube. I have that other pastry sheet to work with, so I'm going to prepare four more of these rolls, and that'll give me eight pastry rolls to work with. I'm also going to start working on my cream filling. You could, if you wanted to, make just a standard custard filling for these pastry rolls, but I like to ramp things up a little bit. So I'm going to make an almond praline, which is an almond candy, to flavor my custard filling. I need about four ounces of almonds. That's about 113 grams .8. four and two for me to nibble on. So there's my four ounces of almonds. I'm going to roast these in a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes. That'll give them a nicer flavor and it'll make them a little bit easier to chop up in the food processor. So there are my almonds. Oh, smell of roasting almonds. I need to let these cool down so that I can chop them. I'm going to give my almonds here a brief chop. And let's see, I like to do this. I'm going to put a little bit of a barrier on there just so that it, I don't get all those crumbs up in my lid. There we go. One last thing to wash. This, by the way, is my limited edition metal food processor. Don't email me and ask me where you can get one. They really were limited edition. I've looked. I have not been able to find them for sale anywhere, but I really, really like this thing. So I'm going to pulse this just because I want to give my almonds here a brief chop. And that should be good enough. I'm going to be chopping these again. Oh, gosh, this aroma of roasted almonds. I'm going to be chopping these again after I turn these into an almond praline candy. I'm heating a skillet on the stove here into which I'm pouring one half cup, which is 125 grams of granulated sugar, one quarter cup, 60 milliliters of water, teaspoon of lemon juice and a half teaspoon of salt. I want to bring this mixture to a boil first of all to dissolve that sugar and then I'm going to reduce the heat. As this, as the water boils off, the pan is going to get hotter and hotter and the sugar is going to start to melt and it'll start to change color. I want it to change to a pretty good golden color. Now as you can see my sugar has started to turn golden color. So I'm turning my heat off and then I'm going to immediately pour this over my almonds. Like so. Don't worry about any residual sugar in the pan. Once that pan is cooled down, this is very hot right now. It's up over 300 degrees. Once this pan is cooled down, just fill it with water in the sink, let it soak, and all that sugar will dissolve. Meanwhile, I have to let my praline now cool down, and then I'm going to finish chopping that up in the food processor. So I'm going to break all this up. It's fully cool. And then I'm going to put these chunks in my food processor. With the rest of my almonds. And then I'm going to chop this up. Oh, 
Okay, let's see what I can do here. Pulse. I need to chop my praline down fairly fine because this will be mixed into a pastry cream and then piped into those pastry rolls. If there are any large chunks in there, they'll clog the piping tip. I want to put a little bit of vegetable oil in there. That's one teaspoon. And that'll bring this together into a paste. There's nothing stuck in the corners here, which there is. <laughs> that looks so good. It's exactly what I want. I see no really large chunks. And there we are. I'm old school when it comes to making custard. I use a double boiler, simply setting one pan inside of another with water in the larger pan. I've seen the cooks on TV who eschew the whole double boiler thing, and usually they complain it's too much effort to set up. To me, if they're going to be too lazy about cooking, why cook at all? The reason why I use a double boiler is that it protects the inner pan from getting too hot, in which case you would scramble your eggs and end up with milky scrambled eggs. There's nothing you can do about that but throw it out and start all over again. Why take risks? So I use a double boiler. I need to start off by softening my gelatin here. This is one packet of gelatin, which is about one quarter of an ounce, seven grams, one tablespoon of gelatin, dry, unflavored gelatin. And this is one quarter cup of water, which is about 60 milliliters. You just want to sprinkle the gelatin over the top, like so, and let it sit. And that's my softened gelatin. Next, I want to combine five egg yolks. I separated four more eggs. And although it looks like there's two egg yolks in there, that's the double yolker that came from that egg that I separated earlier. I'm going to count that as one since it came from one egg. This is one third of a cup or 66 grams of granulated sugar and I have here cornstarch one and a half tablespoons cornstarch. And I want to just whisk all this together to combine it all. It takes seconds. That's ready. In the smaller saucepan here, not yet in the double boiler, I'm heating one and a half cups of milk here, and that is 355 milliliters. And I'm going to heat this up until it just comes to a simmer, and then I'm going to remove it from the heat. My milk has just started to come up to the simmer, so I'm going to put about a third of this milk in there and just Whisk it in. This is called tempering the yolks. It's a way of protecting them so that you don't end up with scrambled eggs. And now, whisking constantly, I'm going to whisk my yolk mixture into my milk. By tempering the eggs, you're sparing them from being scrambled by the hot milk. I'm going to put the last of my bowl in there because there's sugar in the bottom of this bowl. Get that whisked in. Now I'm ready to start cooking this in my double boiler. Heat the water in the larger pan till it comes up to a boil and then Set the smaller pan into it. 
and you can reduce this heat. As far as how much water goes into that larger pan, it's just enough so that when the smaller pan rests in it, the bottom of the smaller pan just comes into contact with the water. I know from working with these pans that it's about one cup of water. Now I need to constantly stir this mixture. I'm going to keep my heat down. I want to keep the pan in the water in the larger pan just at a simmer and I want to heat this mixture up and cook it for about eight minutes it'll start to thicken when this comes up to temperature where the egg mixture just starts to cook and there's my eight minute timer now what I have here is three tablespoons, which is one and a half ounces of cold butter. That's one and a half ounces of 42 grams. I'm going to stir that in, stir that in, stir that in really, really well. The reason why that's cut up into pieces, and that's cold from the refrigerator, by the way. It'll stir in better if it's all cut up into pieces rather than going in as one big lump. And then I want to add one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. So I have my little stopper bottle here, eyedropper bottle. Two, three, four, five, and six. I know that eyedropper holds one quarter teaspoon. So six of those gives me my one and a half teaspoons. And see how wonderfully thick that is, how beautiful that is. No lumps in there. At the first sign of any lumps, if you should see it start to form lumps, I'm going to turn the heat off now and then remove this from the water. If you do see lumps start to form, get it off the heat immediately and just whisk, whisk, whisk really briskly to stir in those lumps. Otherwise, you'll end up with a pan full of milk and scrambled egg yolks. So there is my custard and that is just beautiful. Look at that. I love custard. My last step now here is to add my softened gelatin. Gonna mix that up in there and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna whisk that in with my battery powered whisk. That's this. Make sure that's fully blended in there. Now, just to explain something. This is rather thin, right? But what's going to happen is once I make my praline cream and then I refrigerate it, that gelatin and the butter will help to solidify that custard and give me a more, um, what's the word I'm looking for, a better, thicker texture to my custard cream when it's inside of my pastry. Okay, my last step now here is to transfer this to a bowl. like so okay and then to protect that from forming a skin cut a round piece of parchment paper or use plastic wrap I put a little tab on there so it'll be easier to remove it later on and just press that onto the surface like so all the way around beautiful now, this has to be refrigerated to allow it to cool for one hour, and then we can complete our praline, almond praline cream filling. My custard now has cooled, so I set up my stand mixer. The next step is I need to whip up some heavy cream, which will be a part of my pastry filling. I have here one cup, which is 237 milliliters of heavy cream, and this is chilled directly from the refrigerator. So 
So I'm going to pour that in there, raise my bowl, and I'm going to whip that up to soft peaks. I'm going to start it kind of at a medium speed first until it starts getting frothy. And as, it's, as it starts to get frothy, I'm going to start increasing my speed until I whip this up at a fairly high speed, again, to soft peaks. So there is my cream. Soft peaks, it's not stiff peaks, it's a little bit runny. That's fine. Next, I need to combine the custard and the almond praline. And this is where you have to be a little bit cautious because if there are any lumps in this mixture, they'll block the piping tip when you pipe the cream into your pastry shells. So you have to really make sure that everything is broken up fine, that there are no large lumps. I'm going to put it in a big bowl like that and then get in there with a whisk and really make sure that that's all broken up. I've done that where I've combined them and I thought, oh, the lumps will be okay. Look at that nice big lump there. That's what you don't want. I've done it where I combined everything and then went to pipe it inside of some pastry shells and what a mess. It was just awful. Then returning to my pastry, this is going to be stiff because it's cold from the refrigerator. That butter has set up and the gelatin has set up. So I need to spoon this out of here into my praline. Like so. As I work this, it will soften up. But I don't want it to be that liquid that it was earlier when I first poured it into the bowl. Okay, now I need to combine this. And this is going to take a while because it's stiff. But again, this will soften up as I work it. Okay, I've been working this for a while. You can see how that's softened up quite a bit. It's like creaming butter. You can soften it up. That's looking nice and smooth. Returning once again to my whipped cream now. I'm gonna combine my custard praline mix with my whipped cream. All right, that looks good enough. Ooh, no, a nice chunk right there. I don't want to lose. Okay, now at this point, you want to just very gently fold this together. And the reason why is you don't want to break down that whipped cream after you whipped it all up. So just gently fold this together until it's all combined. And then we'll be ready to start piping this into our pastry tubes. Okay, my cream is mixed now, my almond praline filling. Now I want to start piping it into my pastry tubes. I have piping bags, but I like Alton Brown's idea. Use one that's disposable. And don't buy the expensive ones that are available in those cooking stores. Just use a regular old plastic bag. That's what he uses and it works really well. Let me show you how I'm going to do this. I'm using a fairly large tip here. This is a Wilton number 48. It's a star tip, about a half inch. What's that, about 12 or 13 millimeters? With a pair of scissors, I'm going to cut off a corner here, like so. Open my bag. 
and then push my tip through that hole get it nice and snug in there like so and what I like to do is use a piece of tape I'm using blue painters masking tape and just go around that and secure that in place like so and that's how I do it to fill the bag just start spooning in the pastry cream filling. You don't have to put it all in at once. You can put in some of it, put your cream back in the refrigerator, and just work with what you've got, add more later. So I'm going to press the air out and at the same time press my filling down toward my tip like that seal my bag and there we go and then just squirt your filling in there fill the tube and then come to the outside there it is I mean it's that simple to fill these tubes okay I'm so ready to taste this <laughs> Those of you who are thinking people out there already are anticipating what will happen. What would happen if I just chomped down on this like it was a hot dog in a bun? Well, the cream would come just squirting out the end. No, <clears throat> this is a more elegant dessert. You need to eat this with a knife and a fork. So to eat this, I would very carefully cut through it with a knife like so and maybe even divide that piece in half and then taste it that way okay oh, so there it is this just looks so delicious I know it's got to taste as good as it looks Oh, that is so good. I see that puff pastry. It's so light and delicate. And that cream filling is just delicious and sweet. Oh, that is fantastic. So, excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my almond praline cream filled pastry. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.